Hello, everybody. Welcome to day five of the Your Relationship Workbench series. And I'm your host, Jeff Lawton. And I am your relationshiparchitect.com for those who might be seeing this for the first time. So today, the thing I wanted to talk about I'm looking at it as the upsides of the downsides. And there are plenty of downsides that many, many people are experiencing, if not everybody in some way, shape or form. And the reality is some of them are worse than others and on the surface. And I really wanted to look at what it is that I could see and offer to you about the opportunities, the way to take the down and create some up. And in these times, when we can find ups, whether that's an uplifting of mood, uplifting of hope or possibility, or even just being able to cope with suffering that's actually happening, then that can only be a good thing. So I just want to say that if you're watching on Zoom, then you're welcome to put questions or comments in the chat box. If you're joining me on Facebook in the Your Relationship Workbench group, then please put questions in the comment box or comments. Please comment. Um, Really, one of the things I wanted for this series was to provide a place where people could share. If you're really isolated, for example, and you're wanting to talk and just be able to interact with other humans um, in a non-work context, please, I'm, I love conversing. So questions, share stories, things like that that you might have. This is a place where you can bring those if you feel comfortable. And if you're on Zoom, you can have your camera off if you don't want to be seen. So, because I know we're talking about stuff that maybe you don't want all over the place, but this is a private group. So please feel free to contribute. And if you watch this after the fact, then please leave comments and questions, share stories if you dare in the comments box if you're in the group. And all the videos also, by the way, are going up on YouTube within a day or two of each episode. Okay, enough of the logistics. And let me just um, do a quick, I'm watching for comments in the, on my phone. So thank you for being here, you three that are on Facebook right now. So let me say that overall, I feel like to the mind, probably one of the biggest downsides, which is really the whole context for this four week series I'm doing, one of the biggest downsides is we have no idea what's gonna happen. We don't know what our future looks like. We don't know what the future of our country looks like. We don't even know really what the future of the world looks like. And our minds really, really love to know what's gonna happen. And we don't, and we can't. So to a lot of people, that really feels like a major problem, it brings up fear. It brings up a lot of unease. And so that downside in and of itself is an opportunity to be able to find opportunity, to create opportunity. Because listen, here's the thing, everybody. And you know, if we really stop and think about it, this is actually not new news to anybody over, let's say 20, 25, which is we don't really know how anything's ever gonna turn out. 
We don't know what the future holds or brings, ever. And anytime you're pretty clear that you think you do, you're deceiving yourself. So how do we take this seeming downside that the pandemic is bringing of now there's even more uncertainty? How do we make good advantage of that? So I'm going to share four downsides and what I think the upsides are. And I'm going to suggest some things that you can do to optimize the upside and not to ignore the downside, everybody. When we're scared, we're scared. It's worth noting that, but it's also really important that you don't move house to live in that fear all the time. That just debilitates you and that's no good. So the first downside that I know I've had a little bit of experience of and that I've got to, I know that some of my friends are experiencing is loneliness. Now, I'm married. I love my wife. I love being with my wife. I've got two dogs. But I'm noticing that people can feel lonely because we're literally cooped up in our house most of the time. And if you're single and you're alone and you're not getting to go out and interact with friends or be social, that's really hard. That can be excruciating for some people. So the, the upside of that that we can create is to get more intimate with ourself. We can get more connected to who we are when I'm not knocking socializing, we're all social animals, but a lot of us can use being really busy going out every night or you know, being in work meetings all day and into the evening. We can use all that busyness and we can use all of that activity, including being with people we really love hanging with, to avoid ourself. And I think this pandemic is providing an incredible chance to really redefine who we are or maybe refine who we really are outside of our social activities and personas. And so what can look like loneliness is an opportunity to be able to get more intimate with yourself. And that can be done through meditation. If you don't have a meditation practice at all, I highly recommend you develop one. And one of my favorite practices for that, particularly for beginners, is to go to the website www.10, and that's the number 10, minutemind.com, 10minutemind.com. You can join up for free for a certain number of days. It's really cheap beyond that. But if you haven't meditated in a while or ever, this is one of the best mindfulness meditation uh, programs I've ever run into. And I've been meditating for a good 25 years. So that is cheap, it's easy, and other people I've turned on to it have found that it's actually really helping them calm down more. Another practice, if you don't wanna meditate, or if you do, this is the second practice you can add, journal. The mind is going me, 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 all the time with all this stuff. Well, mine is. So given that we're all human, I imagine some of yours are too. Get it out on paper. Let it vomit itself on paper. Because so much of what it's saying that's oriented towards fear, worry, doubt, is just your ego having a freak out. So get it out on paper, get it out fully. Don't think about what to write, just write. 
and then give it a read. And then if you're inclined, rip it out and burn it safely. Let it go, give it over. Okay. This also can create an upside to another downside, which is when we get taken out of our routine and our hiding places, our shadow self just comes bubbling right up. And sometimes it doesn't even bubble, it just bloop, comes up. When we least expect it, and usually when we least want it. So you can use the journaling practice in particular to be able to just give that part of your mind a voice and then release it. Because the thoughts come and they come and they come and they come, but they go and they go and they go. There's one way to let them go a lot faster. Another downside, unhelpful patterns that fear, loneliness, scarcity. And, you know, it's kind of cool in transformational circles to talk about scarcity mindset and all that. And, you know, I'm a big fan of fighting that. But the reality is, for a lot of us out there, scarcity is now really, really real. If you've lost your job, if you're waiting for checks to come or unemployment money to come in, scarcity is a real thing. But even that reality can be better managed by working with those patterns that come up when you do get scared, when you are freaked out about money, if you are freaked out about what's going to happen to the world. We have to take this time to manage those thoughts. So the journaling can really help with that a lot as well. Now, another cool thing about fighting our patterns is that it gives us an opportunity to rediscover what's underneath all of those coping patterns, those behavioral patterns that we all learned when we were kids to cope with whatever was going on back then, what can we do with those to get them changed? You can change a pattern in about 10 to 12 days. And it kind of takes three to four weeks to make it permanent. But when you can recognize the pattern, if you can just even see, oh my God, I go there all the time. I have this thought at least five times a day. Then what you can do is if you notice that that's true, you're observing the pattern. And when you observe the pattern, you get out of it right there in the moment and you get back to present time. So another really cool practice, and I've got a recording of how you do this practice in more detail that if you either do a direct uh, Facebook messenger message to me, or if you just email me at Jeff, G-E-O-F-F, -F, at yourrelationshiparchitect.com, I'm happy to send you the recording. But it's, it's a process called expanded awareness. So if these patterns are coming up and you're getting strung out, freaked out, stressed, anxious, you can look at some spot in front of you, a little bit above eye line, like maybe 10, 15 degrees above eye line, and just stare at that spot and then open your awareness to the edge of your peripheral vision and breathe. Slow, steady breath, feeling your feet, noticing the periphery, and then sometimes take your eye off that for a moment, feel what's happening in here, and then go back to looking at that spot and letting your awareness go all the way to the edge of your peripheral vision. And you can do that even for five minutes. 
And that is going to get you out of your head and all that emotion that might be coming up because of the fear or anxiety, you're gonna notice it's not there. And you can do that anytime, anywhere, except when you're driving. If you're driving, don't do that practice. Okay, lastly, downside. Well, actually one other thought about that last piece is when you can see the patterns that don't work that being home and having the whole world kind of on pause in a lot of ways, it allows you not only to uncover the old you, the more authentic you that got covered up by all those wounds and coping strategies that we developed and all the patterns we took on. When you can see them, step away from them, you get to look and see what is it that I want to be now? What's my heart wanting? What's good in my life? How am I blessed right now? And practice owning that because we create our inner reality, well, you can take credit and realize how awesome you are that you've made choices, even if you didn't know it in the moment, that have allowed you to have a life with these blessings. When we look at what's good, the brain can't really focus on what's bad. So you can try that one out too. What's the new you that's wanting to rise from the ashes of not just the pandemic when that's over, but just the ashes of all the disruption to our sense of self and to our routine. So lastly, downside is fear. You know, I don't know everybody. I, it sure looks like there's a lot to be afraid of, but I always think when I'm feeling afraid, Number one, fear is always about the future. It's rarely about now unless you have a gun to your face that someone else is holding. Yeah, you ought to be afraid then. But most of what we're afraid of is the future, which doesn't exist. So when that comes up, one thing to remember is a great acronym for fear. It, well, two acronyms. Forgetting everything is all right. Another one is false energies appearing real. Fear is inherently false, again, unless a train is coming and your foot stuck in a train tie. So much of what we fear, including, as I mentioned earlier, the fear that we don't know what's going to happen. You get out of the grip of that by coming back to the present. Just like, is what I'm afraid of right now, if I look around, is any of what my mind is telling me I should be afraid of, is that real right now? No. If it is, that's another thing. But my experience is it's almost never true or real, if for no other reason than the fact that if I'm worrying about what's going to happen in two or three weeks, that doesn't even exist yet. So, the key, the upside, is you can use that fear to strengthen your own muscle of how to be present. Because if we're present, we can always be the eye of the hurricane swirling around us, or in the case of fear, the eye of the hurricane or tornado in our own head. So, when you get afraid, close your eyes, take a deep breath, and then look and ask yourself, what is real? And you're gonna find that what's real is right now, right here in this moment. And here's a mantra you can say to yourself and say it so often that your mind, your brain actually burns it in as a new neural pathway. 
right here, right now, all is well in my world. Now, if all is not well, you have to deal in present moment with what's here to deal with. And even then, when you get afraid, to be able to, if you are a praying type of person, go into prayer. Or you can just imagine that fear turning into a little ball and stick it in your pocket or put it down on the floor near you and just focus on doing what needs to be done right now. But if fear is coming up and there isn't anything wrong, if you're blessed to have a roof over your head and you're blessed to not be sick, if you're blessed to be able to eat, you have food to eat, and if you're even more blessed to have people that love you, even if you can only connect with them on Zoom right now, or your family, your children, your partner if you have one, blessing, so much blessing. So key into that right here, right now, I have all those blessings. I'm good. That might change, but you'll deal if it does. And right now, if your mind's freaking out, right here, right now, all is well. So that's what I have for you today. And let me see, I'm the only one here on Zoom. Let me see if there are any questions. No? Okay. So those of you on Facebook, if you got a question or a comment, don't be shy. This is a private group. We already know you're in the group. So please feel free to ask. <clears throat> I want to end today with two other things that I think can help create more up. One is fear is incapable of existing at the same time that love does. So love is always going to be an escape route from the fear, anxiety, the, the contraction that can come up. Love opens everything up. So you can always think about someone that you love. Something you love. It gives you space. When we're freaking out or we're scared, we contract and tighten up. Love opens you back up. Even if it's a moment. But if you do it moment to moment to moment to moment, you have a lot of moments where you're open. That's going to make you more resourceful. And the other thing I want to say is that this is a great quote that a friend of mine said earlier this morning on a Zoom call. The biggest hell, and there are a lot of hells, on our planet right now. If you're in the US, we have the highest infection rate in the world. Things aren't so great here at the moment, but while it's true that we all have whatever challenges we have, the biggest hell is in our mind. One of the key ways to getting through life in the best possible way is to manage your mind. So I'll repeat that quote. The biggest hell is in your mind. So meditation, mindfulness meditation in particular, in my experience, can be a way out of that. If you're in that hell, talk to someone. Talk to your best friend. Making sure that it's a friend who can hold where you're at and not try and fix you 
that can just get you and love you. That would be great. If you have a partner, and I'll be sharing more on Friday. On Friday, the, the episode is going to be about the ins and outs of communicating beautifully in the pandemic. But get over this kind of American thing that I think we have, that we pull ourselves up by the bootstraps and we just handle our shit. Get rid of that. If you're really having a hard time, reach out to people you love. Also feel free to reach out to me. I'm spending most of my time helping people through things like that. All right, everybody, let me check. I've got no questions. Uh, one comment, though. Okay. All right, everybody, let me check. I've got no questions. Uh, one comment, though. Okay. All right, everybody, let me check. Still learning how to manage all the technology. So, everybody, that's it for today. If you're watching this again on replay here in the group, please comment. If you've got suggestions for what you'd like me to talk about somewhere in the remainder of the series, which we have two more weeks of after this one, put them in. Send me a message in Messenger if you're shy. And thank you for watching. Remember to love, find stuff to laugh at, stay safe. Stay home. Be well. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.